Howdy, folks. Welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show Daily Update. This is a special uh, Good Friday edition. And so, Brent, uh, our, by the way, our daily update is brought to you by ARC, ARC.io. Right. Let me tell you something, the simplest way to blockchain, folks. Check it out. And Brent's going to run through some things. And then this special feature, we have Bo Polney standing. He's in the waiting room. Bo, right Bo knows, and he's in the waiting room. Let's run down through the markets real quick. Uh, Bitcoin's up a big $11. You know, we almost got through 60,000, it's kind of fallen back, uh, but it's uh, no uh, no reason that it doesn't fall back. I mean, we're at 60,000. So overall market's up 1.31% in the crypto. So that means the altcoins are doing better than Bitcoin. Dow's up 171, which is half a percent rise. S&P's up 46, that's 1.18 rise. NDX is up 238, that's 1.8. Rise gold's up six dollars and 49 cents, silver's up half a penny. Our crude is basically flat. And look at those futures 63.095 for December 21, 65.995 for December of 22. But they both are up 160, uh, with Bitcoin up right now uh, 34.75. Ethereum's up 108, the uh, polka dots up 195. XRP is up two cents. Cardano is up seven cents. Litecoin up three bucks, puts it at 205.75. Uh, Link is up a buck 15. And Theta is up 32 cents. All right. So ran through that. Oh, it's all green. I'm green. We look like a couple of uh, Easter eggs here <laughs> on, good so, Friday. on a good Friday. So uh, now we're going to bring in Bo. And there he is. Hey, Bo, how are you doing? Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So uh, absolutely. Bo, I have to tell you, your headline on your slide deck is a statement all in its own on this Good Friday. Greatest time point in human history. And, buddy, I, I'm, I'm excited to for the next, you know, several minutes here while we while you drag us through this and tell us everything that's going on. It is exciting times. Uh, yeah, you know, actually, um, and I want to preface what we're going to talk about just to cl clarify a little bit. So, um this is Good Friday, but remember the reason it's Good Friday, like we talked earlier, is because this is the time when point time point when Satan killed thinks he killed Christ. So to him, it's, it's a Good Friday. Um, Ishtar, Ishtar is a fallen angel. So just be very clear about all these things. The world we live in, it's all make believe. None of it's real. Okay, uh, Jesus died and he rose on the, on the third day, and so it's Happy Resurrection Day, not Happy Easter. Just to be clarify where we are biblically, because these are biblical times. So let's, like God, God speaks very clearly. So let's speak clearly um, to have an understanding of, of what's going on, because it's crazy what's coming down the pipeline here. And um, like the headline, you know, of my presentation, yeah, greatest time point in human history. So to be truly honest with you guys, you know, we've waited forever uh, for something big to happen. And uh, the, the world has been controlled. Every market that you went through, Brent, earlier, as you know, it's just everything is controlled. You know, silver's up 50 cents. Wow. It, you know, like what a joke. You know, it goes up a dollar, goes down a dollar, goes up a dollar, goes down. This is what's this. That is called price manipulation. OK, mm -hmm. there's no such thing as silver going up and down and like a yo-yo for the past nine years, you know, from forty nine dollars down, down to twelve or whatever it was. And then it came up and it's been like for the past three years, been range bound to three bucks or something. It's just, you know, what they want to do is maintain their status quo. When I say status quo, it's their status quo quo forever because their status quo gives them one thing control of humanity and we're about to come to a time point where they lose it and when they lose it we're gonna see crazy infighting amongst um you know the people that have been controlling this stuff so i don't know the events that are coming guys but i'm excited to watch the next few months let's just put it that way Oh, amen to that. Amen. And, you know, talking about, you're right, talking about the status quo, you know, one of the things that a lot of us don't understand is, is that these financial systems are so interrelated and they're built on nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in fact, if you look at a chart of what happened uh, in 19, this will be my next, next week's fence post. 
you're going to chart when we went off the gold standard in 71, that's when the divergence of productivity mm -hmm. and income, it, it all unhinged. And yeah. all you have to do is look at that graph and you know what's happened. Well, the problem is it's become so unhinged, the only way they can keep it going is to perpetuate the myth. Sure. And, and that only is going to happen so long. And then a day of reckoning is pretty much here. Well, look at you look at you have to look at history, right? Mm -hmm. As long as this is really important to consider and people to understand, right? JFK introduced a silver back dollar, right? That prevented money printing to infinity. So he needed to go, he needed to go bye-bye. And so mm -hmm. they took care of it. Okay. Then Nixon turns around and decouples gold from the dollar. When you have a, a monetary instrument. You have the ability to print and control it, and it's not attached to anything. If it's not attached to gold and silver, it has no value. So what you do is you perpetuate a lie over and over and over and over, over. You repeat a lie to tell everybody it has value, and eventually people believe the lie. So for the past, you know, hundred however long this currency's been around, but basically since they detached it, it's not been attached to gold. So all it's attached to is faith and confidence in the United States. Well, that's great uh, as long as there's faith and confidence in the United States. But what have they done now for the past fifty years? They printed money to infinity. So anything that, and this is true about the laws of life, right? Anything that has an infinite value has no value. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if you can make something to infinity as much as you want of it, what gives it value? There is no value to it. That actually is the reason cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin does have value as an example, right? Because there's only 21 million in theory, or that are supposed to be ever of them, right? That's why gold and silver have value. Why do they have value? Because you have to go through energy. You have to dig them up. There's only so much in the ground. You, how much you're going to find at a certain time. So it's it's finite in its value because there's only so much of it. So anything that's in limited supply has value. Anything that can be printed to infinity has no value. It's just that for the past generations, we've been told that the dollar and these fiat currencies have value. But you have to go back to the start of them, right? What happened was long time ago, well, why did they create paper money? They created paper money for one specific reason, for convenience. So uh, uh, someone who had a, a block of, or a, a rock of gold would go to the bank. They would give the banker the piece of gold. The banker would then give this person numerous instruments of paper to make it more convenient to go transact because you can't, you know, one bar of gold or one rock of gold buys too many things. So they would give them numerous pieces of paper to go transact. But at any point in time, they could take that piece of paper back to the bank and convert it for a smaller piece of gold if they spent some of it. So that was the attachment that was always there until Nixon. And now since Nixon, since there's no more attachment, you can create it, you can create it to infinity. Okay. So, okay. That hasn't happened. They haven't created it to infinity. Really? They don't report how much money is now out there. They usually, it's called M1 or M3, whatever it was. They stopped reporting that years ago. Oh, yeah. And now to top it off, every president that's come in, they create, they used to create millions 20, 30 years ago. Then they started to, then they would create billions. And now they're creating trillions. Am I wrong? No, no, not at all. And you know, the interesting thing is, is one of the big proponents of it is AOC. And she's saying that the 2.8 trillion or whatever, two and a half trillion, whatever, you know, it's just money, 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 that they're not printing enough for this latest bill that, that Biden and the Congress is proposing. But she's a big modern monetary theory nut. And basically the modern monetary theory people believe that anything that the government generates money because it controls the currency is going to get an equal value out there with whatever they spend it for. And so it's almost kind of like if Christians decided to just throw away the Bible and didn't try to adhere to any kind of perfect righteousness or any of God's words, it's just whatever story we make up. 
Yeah. And, you know, the other thing, Bo, the U.S., since World War II, the dollar, the U.S. dollar has been the world's reserve currency, and that's headed towards a brick wall as all this financial meltdown comes. So let, let's dive a little deeper into this because you've got some pretty interesting things that you have that you can share with us. The reason I'm talking about this, and I'm glad we kind of started on this, on this footnote about the dollar, um, because that is the one – that is the central focus of everything. And the reason I'm saying that is because how does one create or control humanity? Through their labor, through their hours, right? So if you have a monetary instrument and you give it to people, to, you borrow it to people, then people now have to go to work to pay it back. The beauty is they never borrowed you anything because they never, or they never lent you anything. What they lent you was air. They never, because to create a zero and to, and, to, and with a one in front of it, that's not a that has no value. It's it's just a digit. So they lend you nothing, but then they expect you to pay it back. So th and that's why they have to create going from millions to billions to trillions because the system has to keep inflating itself. Because deflation blows it up, and it, and it basically would be biblically what is described as the third seal. So that kind of takes us into where we're at today. Is where we've the, biblically last year, 2020, was the year that changed the world forever. Once this first seal is opened, the world will never be the same. So read about Revelation, understand about the seals. When the line of Judah opens the first seal. The world will never be the same. First, so we have the first. Now we've had the second last year. Now we're at, we're in the third seal, and the third seal. If you look at to Revelation, what are there's a black horse with scales that he's holding in his hand. Okay, what do scales do, guys? What do they do? They measure. They weigh. Yes, balance. right. It's a balance, right? So when one so for forever, they keep piling on money. And so they, this here being the fiat currency, they've kept creating more and more of it. So they keep, it just keeps getting heavier and heavier. See what I'm saying? And so the scales have done this. They, they've gone from thousands, millions, billions, trillions. That's, that's what's happened. So the weight is completely out of balance now of what's been created in terms of value. And this monetary system is what controls humanity. You don't believe me? Well, what did, how did they get Trump out of the office? Well, how about you pay off and bribe anybody and everybody, and look what you get. You get an, uh, an expected end result, which they were expecting, okay? So that's, that's what has happened. And so now, no one can stop these people, as you've seen. You, you know, you, you haven't had the military been able to stop them. You haven't had a president of the United States been able to stop them. They're all, they're all powerful, right? Because it's, it's, it's an enterprise that has just been controlling everything. And so what we need to see here happen is, a, is an intervention. And when I mean intervention, I mean biblical, because no one has been able to stop these people. Am I wrong? No, no. no. And it, 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 it's at God's hand, and that's what will make the difference here. Right. And so at some point, and this this scenario, this has been written biblically for thousands of years. We're coming to uh, uh, April is supposed to be a time point in history, which is, you know, like, you know, like the, um, the Red Sea was written in the Bible, and we all, you know, read the Bible, and we imagine you know what that moment was like when you see like a sea open up and people walk through it right did you imagine being there right well that's god doing something incredible right imagine being the, the noah's ark when the when the rain started and all of a sudden the land cracked open water shoots up and and most of the earth or however much of the earth floods right imagine being there well that's god again okay april is supposed to be a moment like that. I don't know what's coming. I'm just telling you that something has to stop, something has to change, and we've got numerous cycles 
that have you know, basically taken from the Bible, overlaid on present time, and they're all pointing to the end of April, the start of May, for the glory of God. When I mean glory of God, I mean the power of God to, to come out and do something um, to change the direction this world is headed, because the world is headed in a bad place, to a bad place, or in a bad direction right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, Bo, I have to tell you, with whatever it is, like you said, you don't know, but even the freeze that I'm sure you heard about about a month ago that we were involved in here, we are so frail. Humans have gotten to be so dependent on the powers that be, and we are so frail that one or two days of not having, of having, you know, sub-zero temperatures being without power, I mean, there were people, they thought the world was at an end. And it's sure. literally, we didn't have power and water for a few days, you know? Right. I've, I've heard about, you know, I was, I was listening to some people on YouTube and it was crazy. You know, it's, that's why, what if, but I guarantee you, Brent and Drew, neither one of you are having issues. Why? Because you prepared with some food and some water and you might have even had a generator, right? And mm -hmm. why? Because we've been talking about this for how long now, guys? Yeah, year and a half, easy. Right. Yeah. Okay, so it's it, in the Bible, it's been written numerous times about prepare. You know, have your lamps full of oil. It's just, we don't know what's coming, but if you're prepared, then there's no worries. That is the whole point, whether, excuse me, whether it's being prepared financially, whether it's being prepared um, you know, spiritually, and whether it's being prepared, um, you know, with, with food and water, but all three are important, right? With spiritually being number one, but it's, it's critical to be prepared because if you're prepared, then really nothing can affect you. And when these events go down, you're also not shocked because you were expecting them. I'm sure, you know, so in that time point when the, when the freeze happened, and remember that was a season. So the winter brings cold. Well, biblically, God does things in times and in seasons. Well, the season of winter was pretty shitty, wasn't it? <laughs> right. Well, the reason was because God allowed evil to have a window, mm -hmm. a window, a season. Okay, so God allowed evil to have a season, and that could be equated to a window. But in the, in the year, there's four windows, there's four seasons. So we've, well, the world has had a taste of winter of cold, of deep freeze, of what Satan can do, or what evil can do, let's just say. Now we're in spring. Spring is supposed to bring an incredible change, which then leads into the summer season and then the fall and the winter. So I would tell you that these next three seasons are going to be truly extraordinary. And by the time this year is over, Everything you see today, you will come to realize. Most and much of the world will come to realize that what we see today is a lie. And most of it will be, have already fallen apart. So it's going to be a really incredible year. 2020 was the year that things started. And 2021 is the year that everything ends. That started last year. So okay. fasten your seatbelts. Um, we got... Incredible coming. I believe we got the power of God. We got the glory of God. We're going to witness here coming this year. If you want to uh, kind of scroll through the presentation, I, I've done this. Some of the slides are from prior interviews I did with you guys and other interviews, other interviews as well. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I've condensed some of the slides here to kind of keep this interview right, you know, on point. Uh, April is supposed to be one of the greatest moves of God's spirit in history. Page one. Page two talks about the Constitution. Really important. The United States was founded under God. The people that founded it, about a third of the Constitution is out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So if you think that um, evil can come in, and if these people think, and if, or if evil thinks that they can come in and just take over the United States, that, ha that has a, a covenant with God, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. God has a covenant with the United States. And once we see the power of God, you're going to come to realize that this is true. So law and order will return in 2021. Um, 
Historically, page three, it's fascinating, but the United States and Israel are very much related. The United States and Israel are a brother-sister relationship. From a, a egg and a goose theory, the United States is a golden egg. Israel is the golden goose. So the world for thousands of years, as you know, has been fighting over Israel. Why do they fight over Israel? Because that's the promised land. So forever the wars have been there, but now to get Israel, you got to take the United States. You got to get the golden egg first. So how do you take the golden egg? Well, you take it over, you destroy the constitution, but that again, not going to happen. Um, it's fascinating how Israel and the United States are coordinated back and forth as brother and sister um, in Israel. So we've got Genesis 15, 13, uh, Israel, uh, was in bondage for 400 years. And then at the end of 400 years, Moses shows up and then he raises a staff, Red Sea parts, Israel crosses the Red Sea. That was 400 years to the mark. Mayflower landed in 1620. 400 years to the mark was last November. Fascinating, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing about God. And I'll tell you one thing about the Bible. There are no coincidences. <laughs> no such thing as a coincidence. And you're going to come to realize that everything in this presentation, there's no such thing as coincidences. So I'm just going to show you the math. And that's it. Let's figure out, let's see what the events are and on these time points. We'll see. But the math is fascinating. And there are no coincidences. So 400 years of Mayflower takes us to November of last year, which means that the very first Passover would be the Passover of Moses crossing the Red Sea. That would equate to this April, literally less than 30 days away. Will something biblical happen? I don't know. But it's fascinating that we are living in these time frames and we're going to go know very soon if something specific happens on those time points but i can tell you my cycle time points for gold and silver and cryptocurrencies coordinate and line up with this time point so something is expected to go down here we're going to sc uh, scroll over to page four revelation 12. revelation 12 goes back in uh, September of 2017, uh, it states 1260 days, which is a Daniel time point. So 1260 days would take us to last March or just, you know, whatever, just almost a month ago, March 6th. Now, when you talk Daniel's timeline, if you scroll over to page six, you'll know this, notice after 1260, you've got 30 days. So that 30 day time point takes us to this coming Monday, April 5th. So interesting, but so Daniel's time point that when you have a 1260, you immediately can follow that by 30. So that takes us to this coming Monday. So we will see what could transpire. But again, really powerful time points we're sitting on right here that something could happen. So we've got the 400 year cycle. Uh, we've just talked about the Noah cycle. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. And now we're looking to Revelation 12 sign all pointing to April. Next chart, so we're looking at possibly this month, gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies are expected to lift off and go vertical, meaning a loss of control. Page eight, this is what you talked about earlier, Brent, the Nixon moment, okay? So that event was in August of 71. So biblically, there's something written in the Bible. So we're, we are right now, as of August 2020, in the 50 year cycle this is the 50 years actually the 50th year right now this year and that year ends this year ends would be august of 2021 this august in the bible is written leviticus 25 9 sound the trumpet on the 10th day of the seventh month well where that goes from rosh hashanah which was september 18th 2020 10th day seventh month would line up to april 23rd 2021. So we're what three weeks away from that po time point. Oh, actually, by the way, guess what I got in the mail today from Israel? I got my own shofar, guys. 
<laughs> the greatest thing. I got to show me if I pull it up at the end here. But so anyways, yeah, so I ordered it because I want to blow it. I'm going to be blowing my shofar <laughs> on April 23rd, 2021. I promise you that I will be blowing it because I'm, I'm telling you something big as hell. So I ordered it from Israel for that specific day. That is just side note. Um, going off to page 10. So that takes us to uh, proclaim liberty throughout the land and all of its inhabitants. So that's Leviticus 25, 9, 10. So that's where we're at. So th the bondage would be related to the U.S. dollar. That is basically the slavery that people have been under for years now, especially you know since they've detached it um, and can, be, can now print it to infinity. So the bondage that Israel was under was chains. The bondage that we are under is the fiat money system, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. Yep. So that, and that takes us to page 11. So now we got Leviticus 25, 9, another cycle, and then takes it to also now the Red Sea moment. When you do the calculations, Moses and Israel left the day after Passover ended, which was the fifth. So 20 days to get to the Red Sea and the, and the, and the water parting. So that was 20 days. That takes it to specifically April 25, 2021. So two days right after Leviticus 25, 9. Fascinating. Within a 48 hour window. And then the next chart takes us to Noah. And this is the, the flood cycle, which you know that we talked about last year already. That was the market crash of March. April oil going to zero, which equated to the day the door closed, and then 40 days, Pentecost, 150 days takes us to uh, Rosh Hashanah, death of Ginsburg, and then 220 days takes us to April 26, 2021, the day and exact time point that Noah steps off the ark. So within a 72-hour window, we've got Leviticus 25.9, the Red Sea moment, and Noah cycle all within 72 hours. So if there's a time point that we, meaning our world, could see the glory, the power of God, I would say that the end of April is looking absolutely incredible. And that whole cycle is in topped off with a 400 year cycle with regards to Israel correlation with that of um, uh, the Mayflower. Absolutely incredible in terms of what's coming down the pipeline here. So this year, Passover is supposed to be incredible. Oh, this is really cool. Now, April 26th. So you know that we've talked about April 26th since I think May of last year on your shows, guys. So, mm -hmm. and I didn't know, and none of us knew that this is gonna be going down this way for forever. And crazy is just gonna to continue to get more crazy. But and so now we've had April 26th, since last year, as of May of last year, we've been speaking about this time point, May 26, being something that's supposed to be in a very important time point, like step, Noah stepping off the, uh, the ark. Yeah. Um, and so a very, very important time point, the 26th of April. So now, if it's supposed to be an important time point, uh, it's uh, like just we had, we had Pentecost, which is at 40 days. We had 150 days. We had Rosh Hashanah. So if the 26th is supposed to be a biblical date and an important date, it should be a feast date, a biblical date. Well, something that I just discovered, which I didn't even know, but the 26th, if you do some research on it, it's actually the second Passover. Uh. So there's a second Passover for the, one, for the ones that were unclean, and that's written in Numbers, Numbers 9, colon, 6 through 11. It, it describes a second Passover, and that second Passover, incredibly, this year lands on the 26th of April. How does that happen? Oh, that's just a coincidence. Yeah. But you want another coincidence? Guess whose birthday it is? Trump's really? wife. Really? On that same exact day. Just a coincidence. Yeah. So, I don't know. Just telling you that this April is supposed to be the greatest time point in human history. And that's 
all I can tell you. And it's really getting exciting for what's coming down the pipeline here. Page 11, I've lined up the time points here so you kind of look into the future and, and what are some of the key time points are on page 14. Page 15, we talk about the dollar. Basically, the dollar is going to turn and then just plunge. Something happens, and this is going to be beyond their control. Uh, the, the page 16 is, again, they talk about the third seal. That specifically relates to God's intervention and the scales. Mm -hmm. So the fiat money system burns up. And as it burns up, God's money, gold and silver, get value and go crazy. So that is the seal, the third seal. It's a financial rebalancing of the world's monetary system. And it's supposed to start with the dollar and then later lead into the bond market and then progress into the stock market. So everything paper goes to hell in the next few years. And that will be page 16 and then page 17, starting at the end of April into the start of May, we are looking for the start of a new dawn. And this new dawn is after the glory of God. And we've, if we get the glory of God, we're going to get the greatest spiritual uprising the world has ever seen. So the next, so going to spring, then into summer, oh, Man, I am telling you, just prepare for, you know, something truly incredible that happens here very, very shortly. And this year is going to be truly spectacular. For, when I say spectacular, it's going to be spectacular, incredible for the people that have waited for this, for prepared for this, okay? But it's going to be the just like the scales, right? It's going to be horrible, terrible for those who were running the other side of the scales. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, it, when I say it's a financial shift, but the financial shift leads to all kinds of disclosures and, and truths getting revealed. Because remember, it says in the Bible, the truth will set you free. Well, the freedom is gonna come in the rebalancing, but the freedom is gonna come with a whole bunch of consequences for those have, who have been plotting against God. Uh, yep. Page page eighteen takes us into the new era. So um, fear and hopelessness turns to peace, rejoicing, and love. So uh, again, we've talked about preparation, faith in Christ, food and water, gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies. Um, uh, so if you want to finish talking about cryptocurrencies, we can kind of end there. Um, you guys can ask the questions or anything else you have questions about. But um, cryptocurrencies are going to go the same direction as gold and silver. Well, you know, Bo, and what's interesting about this is that is literally for the last 70 plus years, the U.S. has been, which was founded foundationally on, on Christian principles. And we've been turning away from this being justified to, you know, take prayer out of the schools, get rid of the Ten Commandments, even with this whole COVID fiasco, right. faux fiasco, they went and you could go to Walmart, but you couldn't go to church. And, you know, everything, there's been a, an attack on Christianity, and this is God flipping the script on this thing, which, like you said, is predicted all this time ago. And we've been telling people literally for 18 months, we have you on, you know, every 30, 45 days, and we've been telling people for 18 months, get prepared, get right with God first, then get out and do the things that you need to, don't put, have all your eggs in this, this financial system that we've got. It is collapsing. You know, the you know, interesting, thing, interesting thing is, Bo, like you said, we've been talking about April for a long time. Mm -hmm. But what I find really interesting, and this is this is kind of technical analysis 101, not looking at biblical analysis mm -hmm. of time trends or whatever, but when you have a signal that's coming on a, a three-minute chart, a 30-minute chart, an hourly chart, a daily chart, a monthly chart, and an annual chart, then, you know, you're looking for Rod Steiger to step out from behind, you know, some uh, pillar and say, do, 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 it's the twilight yeah. zone because you know that something big is going to happen. And I did not realize until this show, because we've been talking about it for a long time, 
I did not realize how many different things are pointing to this exact point mm-hmm. in time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I knew because because we've talked about it that it was a, a big inflection point, but from my from my perspective, just all those different rhythms coming down at that same time and those timelines coming down at that same time. Folks, you better get busy. Well, yeah, and, and to that point, we've been telling, with 18 months, we're saying, out into the future, start preparing. Well, let me tell you something, that wall's getting close, and, and we've got this next slide where what you have done, it's uncanny how accurate you are, and we subscribe to your crypto index has from the time we started doing this, and we follow that, and we're invested in those in the cryptocurrencies that you recommend, and I have to tell you, they've been wildly successful for us, you know, and everybody else who has done that, and you're always gracious enough to go. If Bobby put up that uh, next slide, you have your gold and silver index. You have your Bitcoin, your cryptocurrency index, where you go in, and it's just uncanny how accurate you've been in this. So a whole lot of our preparation has been with a, I'm going to call it an inside tipster in there, saying, "Folks, you may want to look at these for hedging your bets." And there is the time is narrowing, and the people that don't take steps almost immediately are going to find themselves short. Like we saw in that big oh, yeah. freeze. But, but let me let me say something real quick. I, I will tell you, and we hadn't really spoken since then. When we had that freeze and everything here that lasted seven days, it was it was almost uh, below freezing for seven full days here. Loss of power, water, and everything else. What we spent our time doing, we were so well prepared. <laughs> we were out there sharing food and gas and propane with neighbors who hadn't been prepared. I knew it. I See, didn't, tell you. I didn't even tell me that, but I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> That's the point of being prepared. So whenever someone around you, when people around you need stuff, we are the stewards of the day. We take care of people around us. That is our job because we did prepare. Yeah. Amen. Exactly. No, it's, it's, it's really incredible. And we don't know what's coming. But as we've said from the time we first started, uh, you know, you were gracious enough to come on here. We've said, folks, don't be afraid. Be prepared. Because what is coming is then a a period of peace after this upheaval. Well, and, and one other thing, and of course we're talking about the perfunctory preparedness of food, water, so on and so forth. But you know, one of the reasons that they want to entertain uh, getting involved with Bo's services is guess what? Once this inflection point happens and things are off to the races, well, then you're going to go. Well, those old cowboys been telling me to get involved for years. I'm finally going to do it. And then what do I do? You know, because <laughs> yeah, at yeah. that point in time, uh, it's kind of all boats are starting to rise. But we also have told you for many years, some of these crypto boats are going to sink because mm-hmm. there's they're, they're built on a screen door and and you need to kind of discern between one from the other, yeah. uh, to be quite honest. So anyway, that's one thing I want to point out is there is an after the inflection point that, that both service could be very productive for someone. Yeah. Well, what I could say about the crypto market itself is number one is when we started talking, Bitcoin was, you know, what? 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, yeah. when they finally yeah. got to 10,000, uh, and then it went to like, you know, 20,000. And, you know, then the patterns we've had, you know, th- the point being is that, um, you know, now it's what, 58,000 and change, I mean, almost yeah. like 59,000. So between 59 and 58 to today being um, Friday, April 2nd. The point being is that, you know, those who had listened would have um, purchased cryptocurrencies when they're uh, under 10,000, right? Or under 20,000. Now look where they are today. And, you know, those things are going 100,000, 200,000 this year yet. So the, the point is, but now you're only looking at a fourfold increase. And you know from our newsletter that I've never been like a lover of Bitcoin anyways. Mm-hmm, right? Sure. You know, I, I, I talk about Bitcoin. Because it's like it's the tide, and when the tide rises, it, all the ships come up, or all the boats come up with it, right? And so, if you look at our newsletter, we cover I think twelve or eleven cryptocurrencies, um, of which I've done all the research and know that we've got some solid coins. And uh, mo- about I think eight of the coins or nine of the coins are up between um, two one thousand minimum, I think, on the lows to up to sixteen thousand percent. Mm-hmm. All of those have outperformed Bitcoin. So the point being is the alternate coins, when you pick the strong ones, they outperform Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, that's why, you know, it's just, you know, Bitcoin, you know, is, is nice to have, but I prefer the alternate coins because 
um, those, this, there's particular coins that are far outperforming any price movement of Bitcoin. So yeah. that is the, the, the reason, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people like what I write because I cover specifically Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I show its cycle, but then we overlay the, the critical or not so much. We overlay some really wonderful alternate coins that have really had some fire under them over the past year now. So it's been really exciting. Um, and, you know, for the moves that we've seen, the cryptos, cryptos, just to be understand, are only front running what gold and silver, particularly right. silver, are going to do. OK, mm -hmm. so a lot of people may have missed a good chunk piece of the boat already for cryptocurrencies, but silver has just, you know, it's a, it's only doubled from where it was last year. Yeah. So it's it's still got, it's, it's they're holding it back because when gold and silver go vertical, the financial system that you know, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Go in the okay, other because, direction. And by the way, if you'll remember, uh, he called the low at, oh, I know. At, at yeah. 3,200 within a, within a day or two or three. No. Kind of thing. Yeah, so within he, 24 hours. It was yeah. actually, well, we had the, I had the exact patterns because life was you were being, you were being too You were being too nice to yourself saying, yeah, around 5,000 or no, no. Yeah, yeah. You, you said, that's it. It's over, you know. Yeah, that did happen. Actually, <laughs> I forgot, <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell you what, Bo, and and I can't wait, you know, to see what happens the rest of this month. Oh yeah, and then come and reflect on it. And it's still, folks, preparation. You never stop preparing. And so, if you've been if you've been like the uh, like the grasshopper laughing at the ant. You better get out there and put your ant pants on. And I mean, I'm not kidding you. You know, Bo, they still have an opportunity because as much as cryptos have risen over the last six months, which has been significant, they've still got a long way to go, as do gold and silver. And to your point, our our personal stashes are ten, about 10% gold, 90% silver. And then the cryptocurrencies are the same thing with about a small amount of that in Bitcoin and the rest of it in these other altcoins that have opportunity for multi X uh, returns, you know? I fully agree. So, you know, I just, it's just really a wonderful time point um, to be at. So a couple of things about the cycle coming. The, there's a big move and explosion coming here soon. Okay. That move is going to be wild. It's going to be great. But then remember, right, they don't want, like they're fighting tooth and nail to not let Bitcoin get above 60 right now. So when it blasts through 60, it's going to be awesome. Okay. Uh, and that's coming very soon. But then when it takes that out, they're going to go crazy and they're going to, they're going to throw everything they can to hammer it down. Not right away, but a little later. So the swings are going to be pretty epic. So we, so the swings, you know, you, we've got them. We know what's coming. And then the move after the, the next pullback is going to be even more spectacular. So, again, if you like to play the swings, you know, we have the dates. If you're not interested in, if you're just holding cryptocurrencies, then just hold them. You don't need dates. But yep. for those who are, you know, who like to trade or kind of lighten up and then buy back or whatever you want to do. So it is fun. Um, and it's more peaceful to have dates, you know, and time points. Yeah. But on the other yeah. end of it, too, I can just tell you there's, you know, the whole world, when the dollar, when the Leviticus 25.9 moment occurs, um, you know, the financial system, as you know, it shifts from a paper-based system to a digital system. And, and then and, and on top of that, it'll be physically based by gold and silver, backed by gold and silver as well, too. So the financial is fiat money system dramatically changes forever. Mm -hmm. this year 2021 mm -hmm. it's really important to understand um uh, and, and so you know this is we're about to experience one of the greatest moves of god's spirit you know or yeah in the history of the world right which means that we're about to see one of the greatest financial events mm -hmm. one of the greatest financial events in the history of this world are expected to be seen this year uh and and it all starts here in april yeah that's awesome, Bo. Uh, you know, again, very, very insightful. You, you know, love, you, you know, Brent, he does a lot of that hard work for us while we're over here sure, doing other things sure. we're doing. <laughs> it's great to that's be why, on. That's why we can dress like the Easter eggs and show up <laughs> and talk to him. <laughs> yeah. Bo, I, I, you know, once again, thank you, folks. Go on there. There's a link on there, and uh, you can download uh, the presentation he did today off our website or his. 
And uh, there, there's a wild 49, which will give you, you can take his uh, his 14 day 99 deal, get it for half price. Recommend you do it, folks. Uh, time's getting close on preparation. And Bo, God bless you and Sophia and the boys and have a happy Easter. We're dressed for it. And uh, look forward to speaking with you again real soon. Brad, Drew, God bless you and your families. Uh, thank you again for having me here. And uh, I truly hope the, the world is listening. So thank you. Oh, amen. 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 Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Bo. Thanks.